Welcome to the Lifestyle Medicine Update. I'm Dr. James Machino. You know, several human prospective studies in recent years have shown that higher blood levels of vitamin D are associated with a significant reduction in risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. For example, in 2014, Little Johns and fellow researchers published their findings showing that individuals with a blood vitamin D level below 25 nanomoles per liter had a twofold risk of developing Alzheimer's disease over the ensuing 5.6 years of the follow up, compared to individuals who had a blood level vitamin D that was above 50 nanomoles per liter. So a two-fold difference in risk, if your blood vitamin D level is below 25 nanomoles per liter, you've got a significant risk for Alzheimer's disease right there, as opposed to getting your vitamin D blood level into the more ideal range, which is above 50 nanomoles per liter. Now, that wasn't the only study to show this. In 2017, the Rotterdam study published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease also showed that lower vitamin D blood levels in individuals over the age of 55 was associated with an increased risk of developing Alzheimer's disease over a 15-year follow-up period. Now, experimental and animal model studies have demonstrated the mechanisms through which vitamin D has been shown to help prevent Alzheimer's disease. As brilliantly outlined in the Journal of Brain Science in 2021, the brain shows the ability to receive vitamin D from the bloodstream and to produce some of its own vitamin D. That's how important vitamin D is to the brain. The brain produces some of its own vitamin D. Now, brain cells convert the vitamin D that it has into the most active form of vitamin D, which is known as 125-dihydroxy vitamin D or calcitriol. Now, in the brain, this form of vitamin D has been shown to enhance the ability of the brain immune cells called macrophages to ingest and clear beta amyloid plaque. Now, beta amyloid plaque is a hallmark feature of Alzheimer's disease. In fact, macrophages derived from patients with existing mild cognitive impairment and Alzheimer's disease patients show enhanced ability to eliminate amyloid plaque after treatment with 125-dihydroxy vitamin D. In other words, if you take immune cells from patients that have mild cognitive impairment or Alzheimer's disease, and you treat those immune cells with vitamin D, they become much better at clearing beta amyloid plaque than if they didn't have access to adequate amounts of vitamin D. Now, in mice that are bred to develop amyloid plaque and Alzheimer's disease, these are transgenic mice, a vitamin D-enriched diet was shown to decrease the amount of beta amyloid plaque accumulation to a significant degree. Now, other studies show that vitamin D is also required to stabilize the amyloid protein precursor, helping to prevent its transformation into beta amyloid plaque, so preventing the formation of beta amyloid plaque in the first place. Now, vitamin D has also been shown to play a role in suppressing brain inflammation and reducing free radical damage to the brain, which are two other mechanisms shown to be helpful in preventing Alzheimer's disease and other neurodegenerative diseases. In my view, there are many reasons to maintain optimal vitamin D blood levels. Optimal vitamin D status is required to help prevent osteoporosis, and various studies have shown its importance in preventing some cancers and possibly some autoimmune diseases. Optimal vitamin D status is also critical to support your body's immune system, helping to prevent virulent infections, especially respiratory tract infections like COVID-19 and pneumonia. But vitamin D is also required for brain health and shows impressive mechanisms involved in the prevention of Alzheimer's disease. Now, human prospective studies clearly show that better vitamin D status is associated with, with a decreased risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. For all these reasons, you should ensure that your blood vitamin D level is above 50 nanomoles per liter or 30 nanograms per milliliter and more ideally above 75 to 80 nanomoles per liter. In the United States, that would be 30 to 34 nanograms per milliliter. But you want to keep it below 150 nanomoles per liter or below 60 nanograms per milliliter to get the full health benefits of vitamin D without any risk. It may interest you to know that in Canada, approximately 32% of people have vitamin D levels below 50 nanomoles per liter. 
and 20% of the U.S. population have vitamin D levels as low as 30 to 49 nanomoles per liter. Now, most people can achieve an ideal blood vitamin D value by supplementing with 1,000 to 2,000 IUs of vitamin D per day. So I've provided the references for all this information in the text below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.